Hello, my name is Julius Ludu. I'll be taking you through data communication. Now with this course, you should have some prerequisites in networking or introduction to networking. So this course is strictly on how data, we communicate data from one end, which we will be calling the source, to the other end, which we're calling the destination. So today we'll be looking at, at the end of the course, we'll be looking at how to understand trends in data communication and understand some data representations and data transmission in the first session. The first session we'll be looking at some introduction and basic concepts. Um, first of all, we want to see some known facts. Over the years, computing has evolved and the computer communication has revo revolutionized over the period. And there are some known facts that we want to look at. The first is that there is no difference between data processing and data communication. Now, data processing has to do with transmissions, whilst data communication deals with the switching equipment, what we need in order to transmit data. Another known fact is that there's no difference between data, voice, and video communication. As far as data communication is concerned, once we process the data, either voice, uh, raw text, videos, it still goes through the switching equipment or switching device. So with data communication, there's no difference or there's no significant difference between these um, parameters. Then the last one I want to look at is that the the distinction among single processor computer and multi processor computer is a little not clear. So there's there's some difference although in there, but that concept of having a single processor, multi processor, with regards to local networks is still not clear. So we'll see how best to make it more clearer in our next session. So effective and if efficient data communication and networking facilities are vital to our current age and to our enterprise. There are different forces that are contributing to how data communication has evolved over the period or over the decades. The first we want to look at is the traffic growth. Second is the development of new services. And the third is the advances in technology. With communication traffic, we, we see that there's a whole lot of data moving from one end to the other, both local, which is within buildings and building complexes, then over long distances. This can be over voice or even data. And this has a, a growth of data over the decades. So this has contributed to how data communication is evolving these days or in our current dispensation. Another is the range of services. There's expansion in the services that are being rendered as far as networking is concerned, and they are on the high demands. We are looking at HTTP, we are looking at DSCP, we are looking at a whole lot of services that are being run with regards to how we transmit data. And the final one is the trends in technology that enables the provision of increasing traffic capacity and the support of the wide range of services. So with the first two points, traffic well, communication in traffic and the range of services, we need technology that can support these two increasing forces that are in our system these days. Okay. Now there are four notable trends we want to look at as far as data communication is concerned. The first is the trend towards faster and cheaper technology and this is seen both in computing and in communication. One, when we say computing, it means we are looking at more powerful computers that are going to help in the processing of data. And when we look at communication, now we are talking about fiber optics being used instead of day-to-day uh, -day cabling that is being used. This time we are using fiber optic instead of UTP cables. Now, another trend we want to look at is the voice-oriented te uh, telecommunication network such as the public switch telephone networks. We see various telcos 
making use of these devices. And also data networks are becoming more intelligent than we have. Now, the third notable trend is that we have the internet, the web, we have associated applications that have emerged as dominant features of both the business and personal world. Now people move with work, which we'll be looking at as the fourth notable trend. There has been a trend towards ever increasing mobility. People now do work on the go with their laptops, with their phones, with now data is going mobile. You want to communicate with another person, you're able to even do Skype, you're able to use these video features. This has been the trend so far with regards to data communication. Now I want to look at data transmission and the network capacity requirements. What are some requirements that we will need as far as data communication or data transmission is concerned? Now there have been changes in the way various organizations do business and also process information. And this has been driven by new or changes in networking technologies. Provision of various networking devices are playing key roles in this. And this has resulted in the need to increase the speed and efficiency of the internet. Now on the other hand, it is only such increased speed that makes the web or the use of the web more fun. Imagine you having a slow network. You click one, you want to look for something in Google or in a search engine. You click your search button and it's taking you forever. Now we need fast and increased speed or we need devices or technologies that will cause us to browse or serve the internet, internet more. And this is one of the requirements that we need. First is the speed and the computing power of our personal computers. Now we are talking about the i7s, the i5 computers having a speed of 32 gig or even as low as 8 gig RAM or gigabit RAM. So we need computers that can process our data more faster due to the explosive growth of data that is coming in in our decades. Also, we are looking at the MIS organization having to recognize the, the use of LANs as a viable and essential computing platform. I'm talking about the local area network. Now, what are some of the examples of requirements that call for higher speed? First is a centralized server farm. When we talk about centralized server farm, we are talking about data being or work being done from one central point. So assuming I'm having a, a photo shoot, say, now probably the various colors that are going to be used in performing this photo shoot are in one centralized location. So instead of each individual having different or its own separate colors, we have a very uh, huge server managing these colors and all you have to do is to go in there and fetch what you you want to use or which color you want to use and this is what we are we are terming as a centralized server farm it's can it's not only uh, with colors but with so other applications it can be softwares that are being put on one server for people to get access to we also have the power work groups and we have the high speed local backbone so this will bring us to the end of the first session i'll see you in our next session